Have you ever felt overwhelmed from constantly monitoring crypto exchanges or bogged down by the tedious process of manual order placements? Or maybe simply you're wanting to get into homemade trading bots? Wait no more, I've got the perfect solution for you. Hey, I hope you're doing well. Today we're diving into the incredible world of automatic cryptocurrency trading in Python with the great CCXT library. Actually, what I did is that I compiled six functions that will greatly help you with all of this. So let's go. Step one is to get CCXD working. So if by any crazy unexplainable possibility you don't have it installed on your computer already, you'll have to run a pip install CCXD on your console. I'm just teasing. So here today I'm using a Jupyter notebook to do the illustration of everything that we'll see. So in that case, I have to install CCXD for that session. So I'll just run that cell and then we can run this one as well. As usual, I'll put the final completed code on our GitHub so you can grab it for free. Links below. Now, why do I love the CCXD library and why are we using it today exclusively? It's because thanks to this meta API, you can deal with all the APIs of all the exchanges. And there's so many of them, but of course, you have all the major ones here. So it is a bit of a learn once fit all kind of situation we have thanks to CCXD. So now, initial step. To communicate with an exchange and manage our trading activities, what we need to do is to authorize our program to connect with our account on the exchange. And this is done by setting up API keys. I'll be using KuCoin as our exchange example. That's where I tend to do most of my spot trading nowadays. But the credentials that you need to feed for this API key authentication can depend a bit on the exchange. Well, generally, you always have this API key and API secret. But you can see KuCoin asks as well for a password. I know, don't judge me. I also have some cravings. So if you're not sure what these credentials should be for the exchange that you're using, then you can just simply run this exchange.requiredCredentials method. And you can see it says API key true, so I need to give the API key as well, the API secret as well, true, all the others false, except this one that is password equal true. Now, I'm not going to show you in detail how you create an API key. Actually, I'll link here an old video I did where in there you can find how to do the step-by-step -step process. But just briefly, in general, you just go to your exchange, you go to your profile, which will be often on this corner. Then here you have this API management. So you just simply go in here and you can come here and create your API. You see, I've already done one for this video. So here it is. And what will happen is that during your creation, you will go through some security checks, etc. And at some point when you finish creating it, you will get all this information that I've plugged in here. Obviously, this information is confidential. You shouldn't share it with a third party because this will give them access to your trading account. I'm showing you this for the sake of this tutorial. But as soon as I'm finished with the video, I will come here and delete that API key. Okay, cool. Now it's time to get into these six functions that will make your trading more automatic. And first, to trade, you need funds, right? So the first function is about how to fetch your available balance. Well, let's simply print all our balances using this fetch balance function. So let me simply run the cell and we'll see what comes out of it. Okay, that's a huge dictionary that we have, but in principle, it should be ordered starting with the cryptocurrencies that we actually have an amount of. So we see USDT, we have 15.02, great. If I carry on, I should probably see BTC, where I have this balance, great. So this is quite a big dictionary. If you want to select what's inside, well, you have to select that proper key. So let me simply run this here. And you can see that we have those balances. So 15.02 for USDT and 0 0.00019 for BTC. Let's double check that this works properly and it is what we find on our exchange. Now you saw we have a free amount, a use amount, a total. This also depends on the exchange, but basically what is to be understood here is that if you already have funds that are locked in an order, like a limit order or something like that, or in a trading bot or whatever that has already used your amount of funds, then you will have something written here. But 
obviously what you can use to trade with right now is the free amount. So that's what is important for us. So that's why if you want to single this out, you can also add that key. And I've just simply here defined a new variable that I will call USDT underscore available, which is exactly equal to this free amount of USDT that we have on our trading account. So let me simply print and you'll see that what comes out of it, what is stored in USDT available is simply the number 150.2, which corresponds to what we see here. Great. By the way, if you're a trader and you would like some discounts on your trading fees, check our registration links down below. You'll find some very nice deals like 10% for life on KuCoin and others. Anyway, now that we have dealt with the core of trading, the funds, we have to find out about what we are going to trade and how. This is where the load markets function is going to be really handy. Here I simply store the results of this load markets method in this market variable. So let's simply print what comes out of it and I'll explain what you see here. So again, that's a big dictionary with a lot of information about all the possible pairs you can trade on the exchange. But what is very important to note is the way it is spelled. And this will depend on the exchange. So here on the KuCoin spot market, you have the cryptocurrency, the base written first, which is then separated with a slash from the quote currency. Anyway, now let me print actually this where I've singled out, for example, a pair that I'm interested in. So the BTC USDT pair. So there is still quite a lot of information, most of which you don't really care about, except if you have really specific needs. But I do want to point out a couple of things that are important, especially if you're looking into creating a trading bot. For example, you will see here the precision on which the amount you can ask for to sell or to buy. So there's no point writing numbers with a ton of digits. The exchanges always have a limitation on the amount of precision of digits after the comma that you're allowed to write. So this is something you should be aware of, especially when you're coding a trading bot, where you will have to do a rounding of your numbers considering this or a truncation more precisely. Another thing worth pointing is also the amounts. You have a minimum amount you're allowed to sell or to buy, and you have here the min and the maximum. This is the same when you're when you're using the exchange directly on the web page. If you try to sell or buy it a too small amount, it will say that it is below the minimum. And there is also a maximum. I'm not sure I'm close to ever reaching this maximum on BTC, but anyways, you know, we can always live in hope. Whatever. <laughs> Anyway, more seriously, I won't detail any further these technicalities about precision and limits. Now you are aware of them. And if you need a more detailed explanation on how to handle them, I'll link a video up there. My video where I code my homemade training bot on KuCoin. And I do touch upon these technicalities in detail. When you're trading, you will most likely want to know the price of the asset, right? But in live trading, there is no single price. You have the ask, the bid, etc. Or maybe even more, you want to know some detailed information about the current candle. So this is what this fetch ticker method is for. Guys, I've just realized to refer to these objects here, I sometimes use the word function and sometimes use the word method. In truth, this is a method of the class exchange. But kind of out of habit, I also call them functions because they are, if you want, a function within a class. So I apologize for the purist. If you don't like the fact that I mix them both, I'm very sorry. Anyway, I'm probably going to carry on doing that mistake. Back to our fetch ticker. You see that when you use this method, you have to give the symbol you're interested in. So here I just saw this result in ticker and then we can simply do a print ticker to see what comes out of it. And as you can see, it's quite an, again, a involved dictionary. But see, for example, the timestamp. So that's a numerical number we, we don't quite understand. But however, you get the date time. So this is the date time of the candle we are actually trading at the moment. You can see for now, the highest of the candle is this value here, while the lowest is here. And you also have, for example, the bid price, the current bid price, the current ask price, and a lot more information you might need sometimes. Anyway, if you want to single out one of these values here, well, you simply have to identify the key. So here I want to know the bid price. So for example, I can simply do a print here just for the example. Bid price is 0.24 something, something, something USDT for the symbol we were looking into. So ADA USDT. Okay, great. 
Now we have finished with, how should I say, the functions that deal with the context of the trade. But now we need to get going. We need to start placing orders. And for that, I invoke the power of the create order function. So in the create order function that you see here, there is a series of entries that you need to give. The first one is the symbol that we're trading. So here I'm defining, I'm sticking to the, our ADA USDT pair. Then the next one is the order type. And here I'm going for a limit order, but you could put a market order here if you wanted to. Then you have the side. So whether it is a buy or a sell that you're doing, then you have to give the amount that you want to buy or sell. And finally, because this is a limit order, I have to give the price at which I want to do my buy or my sell. And as you can see, I fixed that here. There's quite a lot of applications to this create order function. So if you want a detailed explanation about all of this, I'll link this video up there, my dedicated video up there, where I go through market limit, spot futures markets, leverage, stop losses, etc. But before we carry on and actually place our order, there is something important that I want to point out here is that the amount that we're giving here needs to be given in the base currency. This can vary depending on the exchange, but at least for KuCoin, this amount here has to be given in the base currency. So if you use other exchanges, just check before, just to be sure. So how do we deal with an amount in base currency? Well, you could give the amount directly if you know that you want to buy, I don't know, 10 ADA, you can go for that and put the 10 in here. But here I'm giving you an example where we're doing a conversion because I want to be able to say, okay, I want to buy 10 USDT worth of ADA. So to do that conversion, I simply need to divide this amount in USDT by the price of ADA. But as you know, there is no single price. We have a variety. So here what I'm doing is that I'm using a standard approach where as the current price, we say that this current price is the average in between the ask price and the bid price. So there we go. Okay, so what am I waiting for? Let's simply run the cell and therefore we will be placing that order. Okay, let's go. This has been run. So in principle, it should appear on our exchange. Let's see. Oh yes, by the way, I didn't mention the base price. I've put a quite a low number at the moment. ADA USDT, ADA is trading at 0.24. So I did it on purpose to put a much lower number. So I know that the limit order won't be executed so that we can now check and see it appearing. So let me simply come to my spot market trading. And okay, I can see that I have one open order that we've just put now in. Indeed, our ADA USDT at a price of 0.1. And actually with the conversion, it is giving us that we will be buying about 41 ADA. Great. Let me come back to the code. There's something else I want to add. As you can see, I didn't simply put this exchange, create order, etc. just at the start of the line. I actually save the output of this function in this order variable. So in other words, this method here, when you run it, will place the order, but it also gives some information. So I'm storing that in order. So let's simply print one comes out of it. Again, there's a lot of information in here, not all of which you will need, and that depends on what you're doing. But one thing important to keep in store, to store somewhere, is the order ID, as we will see in a minute. Great, we're in the game. But now, just a minute, a bit of post-follow-up tools. You might want to consult the status of your order without having to go on the exchange. So this is where the fetch order function is handy. And as I've mentioned just before, keeping your order ID stored somewhere is important because if you want to fetch any information about the order that you've just placed or an order that you placed before, etc., you will need the order ID. So you see here, I use the fetch order method with this order ID plugged in here, and I store that in a variable that I call order status, and I then print it. So let's find out what we see. We have indeed that's the same order ID as the one we had when we created the order. So everything's fine. Symbol, the type, it's a limit, etc. You have basically all the information here. You can find like how much is remaining to be filled or for example, its status, is it still open? Or here, for example, did we set a take profit price or did we set a stop loss price, etc. Guys, remember, as usual, this video is not financial advice. It's just about me sharing my personal opinions and experiences. Anyway, to our final function now. 
So you might realize later that you need to cancel your order because you made a mistake or it simply doesn't suit you anymore. So this is what the cancel order function is for. So in this cancel order method, all you need to feed is, of course, again, the order ID. But you see here, you also have to give the symbol. So this symbol, remember, is the one we have defined when we place the order. So our ADA USDT. Anyway, so let's simply run this. Okay, there's something that is printed, meaning it was canceled properly. And as you can see, our order on the exchange disappeared as well. And that's it. You now have the power to automate your crypto trading with Python and CCXD. If you have any comments, questions, suggestions, put them in the comments down below or join our community Discord. You're welcome there. And if you found this video helpful, I'd really appreciate a little like and consider subscribing too. Happy coding and happy trading. Take care.